Hello students, this lecture slide and voicing of the course GSP 1201 slash 2201 use of English which comes in the fourth semester of the 2020-2021 academic session for the group E, Department of Allied Health Sciences, Dentistry and Clinical Sciences by Sani Saidi Ibrahim from the Department of English and Literary Studies. Welcome on board. The objective of this module, module two, which is divided into two lectures, this is the first lecture, that is module two, lecture one. This module is set to make students understand the basic rules and convention, uh, conventions of using words in isolation and in structures, and punctuation marks for effective spoken and written communication in English. The module focuses on the following items. Word classes, sentence types, tenses in English, punctuation marks. The essence is the students after this module will be able to grammatically use words in the right place, in the right moments. Introduction. Let us begin this class with the uh, word classes, or what we previously known as uh, uh, part of speech. Part of speech, we also call them word classes. They are very important as far as uh, uh, English language or grammar is concerned. Generally, words are considered the backbone of any meaningful human communication. What in English perform many functions in sentences. For example, words are used to name things or places in sentences. In other words, words can be used to modify actions. Words can also be used to show relationship in sentences or in words. So that means words at the basis upon which we build our communication, be it written or spoken. Traditionally, there are eight parts of speech or word classes. You should not be confused when we use word classes for part of speech. They are used interchangeably. These non eight part of speech are nouns, adjectives, verbs, adverbs, pronouns, prepositions, conjunctions, and interjections. Apart from this, Huddleston, 1996, identifies determinators, coordinators, and subordinators as additional classes, while Quack and Greenbaum, 2006, forward articles and, dem and demonstratives to make 10 word classes in English. What this means is that there are there are debates among scholars of what make part of speech. Some add determinators or coordinators and subordinators as additional, apart from the ones we know, the eighth part of speech, as uh, as also part of uh, as. Uh, part of speech. But generally speaking, there are two divisions as far as word classes is concerned. These are we call open class and closed class items. Open class items are called because they accept new members, while closed class items do not accept new members. For example, when you have Part of speech like nouns, adjectives, verbs, and adverbs, they are considered open class because as a result of changing the language is undergoing, then we have new words. So when you have new items or new words into the language, they can only be categorized as open class or they fall under these uh, nouns, adjectives, verbs, and adverbs. For example, the word globalization. 
maybe before the modern time, it wasn't known. So when it was int introduced, it can be a uh, preposition, it can be conjunction, because all these are closed class. They don't accept new members. So any word that is introduced to the language as a result of changing, as a result of new items, new ideas, technology, politics, and so on, so they are what? They are categorized as nouns, adjectives, verbs, or adverbs. But closed class are pronouns, preposition, conjunction, and interjunctions, and these do not accept new members at all. Take, for example, and... But uh, adjectives, they are like mathematical figures. Open class words. As we have already said, we have nouns, adjectives, verbs, and adverbs. So now let's treat them one by one. Nouns, as you have already known, are names given to things, persons, ideas, or concepts. And generally, nouns are divided, are classified into proper nouns, which are used to names, uh, things, uh, names that are things that begin with capital letters, such as Musa, Isa, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and so on. We also have common nouns, common nouns, names that are general names given to persons or things of the same kind. Unlike proper nouns, these commonly shared by person or object that have something in common. For example, woman, chair, table, and so on. We have abstract nouns that refer to the names of qualities, emotions, actions, and, and, and conditions. For example, joy, honesty, happy, sadness, and so on. Concrete nouns are names that uh, can be seen and can be touched. For example, desk, chair, house, and so on. Collective nouns are used to a group of group or collection of things. This consists of people, objects, or animals. A collective noun is regarded as a word. For example, staff, family, team, vocabulary, and so on. Now we go to adjectives. Apart from noun, adjectives are words that describe or qualify a noun. In English, adjectives normally come before the nouns they qualify. For so example, you can see a black boy, a tall man, a beautiful girl, a good work, and so on. So adjectives are also divided into demonstrative adjectives. Demonstrative adjectives are adjectives that point out the particular person or things to whom they are referring. For example, you say, that man is my brother. This woman is kind and gentle. So let me differentiate between demonstrative adjective and demonstrative pronoun. Sometimes they are confusing when used in a sentence. When you say, this is a man, and this man is my friend. This is a man, this man is my friend. How can you differentiate in these two sentences, demonstrative pronoun and demonstrative adjective? So first thing you look at is, the word demonstrator is this. So when it immediately follows a noun, then it is a demonstrative adjective. This man is my friend. So this man is demonstrative adjective because it, it Im immediately comes after a noun it points out. But when you say this is my friend, this is demonstrative pronoun because it represents the noun it stands for. It points out the noun it stands for or it represents. This is my friend. My friend is this. Then we have interrogative, ad interrogative adjective. These are adjectives that ask questions. For example, whose viral is that? Which of my auntie is dead? Then we have possessive adjective, those that show possession. This is his book, her pen, her house, and so on. We have descriptive adjectives that describe person or things. For example, he has a brown car, he has a white house, and so on. Then we have open class continue. Then we have function of adjectives. Adjective performs so many functions in the English language. For example, 
it performs the function of attribution. Then what are the qualities? It shows the attribute of person or quality or, or thing it qualifies. For example, the fair lady, the big man, a short person, and so on. Then predicative adjectives, it occurs immediately uh, after the finite verb of a sentence. You know what is a finite verb? Finite verb, before we come to the verb, is a verb that agrees with, person, with, with a subject both in person and in number. He is my friend. Is here is a finite verb. You find that uh, sometimes it's treated as auxiliary verb, but here it functions as a finite verb or lexical verb. Your data is very beautiful. Beautiful here is a predicative adjective. Comparison. Then we have three comparisons as far as uh, adjective is concerned. We have positive, comparative, and superlative. Tall, taller, tallest, good, better, best, intelligent, more intelligent, and most intelligent. Not intelligent and intelligent and intelligentest. As some, uh, we used to know this in primary school when an uh, English teacher used to teach uh, these uh, adjectives. So whenever you are using adjective in positive, you say he's a tall, but, but Musa is taller than Ali when you are comparing two things. When you are comparing two items more than two, then you use the superlative. He is the tallest among them. But you can't say he, when you say he's intelligent, you can't say he is intelligenter than who. No, he is more intelligent than his friend. Isa is the most intelligent. Then we have verbs. All these are open class, as we say. Verbs are action words. We already know this, and there is either finite or infinite verb. Finite verb agree with subjects of the sentence in which they are used and show the sentence. So now, let's have these finite verbs. We say they agree with subjects, but it should be both in person and in number. You know what we mean by person? If the, if the subject is, is first person, second person, or third person, that is person. Then we have number. So if uh, if uh, sub, is number, is it plural or singular? So a finite verb is a verb that agrees with subject, both in person and in number. For example, Ali eats food. So eats here with S is finite verb. Why? Because Ali is third person, and third person always carries a verb. So now it agrees with Ali, since Ali is the subject and verb is a finite verb, it has S to show that uh, the verb is third person. Then Ali is singular, then verb with S is also singular. So you can see uh, finite verb is a verb that uh, agrees with uh, verb uh, with a subject both in person and in number. Then we say it's divided into lexical and auxiliary verbs. Lexical verb is the major verb in sentence and is divided into transitive verb. So when you have uh, Ali is going to school. So going here is the is the lexical verb, while it is here is auxiliary verb. So uh, transitive verb is a verb that has uh, objects in a sentence. For example, Ali ate food. So it here is transitive because the function, the verb, the action performed by the subject transfer from the transpired or falls on the subject, on the object. So one of the most important thing you consider in deciding whether a verb is transitive or not is whether it has an object or not. When you say he dies, he is a subject, dies is a verb, there is no object here, so it's not transitive verb. Transitive, it's, uh, the word is written from transfer. So when the action transfers from subject to object, then it's transitive. He killed the rats and so on. The girl saw a madam. The girl is the subject, so is a verb. A madam, a madman is, uh, is, a, is, is, is an object. So, so here is a transitive verb. An intransitive verb is a verb that does not have an object and the action does not transfer to the object. When you say 
it rained yesterday. So rain here is, uh, uh, as above is non-transitive. He dies. It flies. The sun shines. So all these. Uh, then we have linking verb. It's a verb that connects the subject of a sentence to its complement or predicate to indicate the state of being. For example, lawyers are liars. My daughter is pretty. These are linking verbs. Open class. Then auxiliary verbs, they are verbs that help the main verb to perform its actions. Uh, uh, to indicate doubt, possibility, necessity, or obligation. Auxiliary verbs are of two types. We have primary auxiliaries, model auxiliaries. Primary auxiliaries, these are three in number. They are namely do, have, and be, and act as both lexical and auxiliary verbs. Even though they are auxiliary, they can also function as lexical verb. Lexical verb, finite verb, main verb, they all mean the same thing. Lexical verbs, here is, she is here. Despite the fact that is is auxiliary verb, primary auxiliary verb, it functions here as what? As lexical verb. Because it agrees with she in person and in number. She is singular and is is singular. Musa does the cleaning. I had a boring experience. As uh, auxiliary, Ladidi is cooking her favorite dish. You see the difference between she is here and Ladidi is cooking. Ladidi is cooking here, then her favorite dish is cooking, is the component of the verb in this sentence. Ladidi is cooking her favorite dish. Then you will find she is here. So is auxiliary verb, primary auxiliary verb here, because it's helping cooking to perform the action being performed by Ladidi. But in the above sentence, she is here, is stand on its own as a verb and it makes sense and is complete and is lexical. So the is in the second sentence is auxiliary, is helping verb. While the is in the sentence above is a main verb. Model auxiliary includes can, could, will, would, shall, should, may, might, ought to, used to, need, and there. You must go back to your house today. Must go. It's a uh, it's model auxiliary. So you need to see my to see me after the lecture. non finite above that are not trusted in any way in tense and number. They are participle, gerund, and infinitive. For example, he's going to see his friend. To see is non finite. Gerund, like it's a verb. It's uh, another name for gerund is verbal now. It's always I ends in ing. You see. He is going to school. Going here is a verb. But when you say going to school is his habit, it's, it's a noun here, verbal noun or gerund. Adverb. Adverb is a word used to modify or qualify a verb, an adjective or another adverb. It usually answers one of these when, where, how, and why. They are classified into adverb of time. She was here last week. Here is an adverb. Uh, last week, adverb of time, adverb of place. The action took it. It tells where the action takes place. The cars are parked outside. He sit down there. Then adverb of manner. It shows how an action took. He drives slowly. He eats quickly. All these are adverbs of manner. Musa answered the questions correctly. Correctly here is an adverb. She danced well. Well is an adverb because it tells us how the action to explain the action of dancing being performed by her is shown through well. Then we have pronouns. Pronouns are words that are used instead of a noun. It's already known. Example is Abdul went to see his friend Sani, but Abdul did not find Sani at home. Then in the above sentence, we can use pronouns in the place of the proper noun. So the sentence will now read Abdul went to visit his friend Sani, but he did not find him at home, you see. So the word he and him replace the word Sani and uh, Abdul. 
the word he and him are pronouns, others are she, her, we, they, and so on. Classes of pronouns, we have pronouns who are classified into separate classes such as personal pronoun, demonstrative pronoun, interrogative pronoun, possessive, relative, reflexive, and indefinite pronouns. Personal pronouns are pronouns that are used in place of nouns, of names, or persons. For example, you say, I, she, it, we, they are all personal pronouns. So when a person speaks to you about someone else who may not necessarily be present, the speaker is the first person, you, the listener, is the second person, and the one per spoken about is the third person. Here are examples of personal pronouns. I, we, second, you, you are your, yours. Third person, he, she, it, his, hers, him, her, they, them. Demonstrative pronouns, as I give example, are used to, uh, to pinpoint or to point out the nouns they stand for. For example, this is an interesting lecture. This is Bayro University Kano. Those are still used. These are interrogative pronouns are used to, to, to ask questions. For example, what is your favorite color? Who gave you my book? Which is yours? Whose back is this? All these are interrogative pronouns. Then we have possessive pronouns. Possessive pronouns are used to show positions or to, to represent the nouns they possess. For example, this book is mine. But what's the difference between this is my book and this book is mine? You could recall that we have treated already possessive adjective. So when you say the book is mine, mine here is possessive pronoun because it stands in place of the noun it shows, it possesses. But when you say this is my book, my book is possessive adjective because it qualifies the noun. The choice is yours. That pen is hers. All these are possessive pronouns. Relative pronouns, the relative pronouns are similar to interrogative pronouns, except that relative pronouns introduce subordinate clauses called relative clauses at the same time connect with main clauses. For example, he is the lecturer that chased his students away. These are the cheers which I told you about. So possessive uh, relative pronouns introduced uh, relative clauses. This is the girl whose father was arrested. This is the man who gave me a lift. Reflective pronouns, when pronouns combine with suffixes such as self, selves, they form what we call reflexive pronouns. For example, they are called reflective because they refer back to the subject of the sentence. She is deceiving herself. Herself and the she mean the same thing. So, in continuation with our closed class items, here we have a preposition. We say it's a word that shows a relationship between two words in a, in a sentence. For example, when we have the book is on the table. On here is a preposition that shows the relationship between the book and the table. So when you say he is inside the house, so inside here is a preposition which shows the relationship between he and the house. So always pay attention to how a word shows relationship between two words or sentences in a sentence to some extent, then you can locate preposition. Now we have conjunctions. You could recall that conjunction is also one of the closed class, which do, does not admit new members. Conjunction is a word that shows or that link words, phases, closes, and sentences in a word. There are three types. We have coordinating, we have subordinating, and we also have a correlative. Coordinating conjunction is a conjunction that uh, 
coordinates all that links two main clauses together. Examples of coordinating conjunction are but, and, and so on. So when you say, he is my friend, but I refused, I refused to help him. You see, but is a coordinating conjunction. I refuse to help him. He is a independent clause. He is my friend. Is also another independent clause joined by code. Then we have. So when you have a compound sentence, a sentence that has two independent clauses joined by code, then that co conjunction is coordinating conjunction. Then we said that uh, and serves to add an item to another. Musa and Isa are dancing. But serves to provide a contrast, he invited her, but she refused. Or serves to provide an alternative, she either passes or fails this exam. So serves to lead to, uh, to consequence, Musa is tired, so he went straight to the bed. To bed. Subordinating conjunctions are words that connect main clues and subordinate clues. For example, if since because as unless before while though all these are subordinating conjunctions when you have a sentence like he comes here though not invited so this sentence is uh, uh this though is subordinating conjunction i gave him because he's my friend because here is subordinating conjunction i have been here since four o'clock since here is subordinate and conjunction. I bought a new car because I needed it. Because it's subordinate and conjunction. Because I needed it is uh, subordinating or subordinate clues. I bought a new car is a main clue. So whenever you see a, a, a subordinate clues attached to a main clues, so you can locate a subordinate and conjunction. Correlative, conjun correlative conjunctions are conjunctions that are impaired or twos. For example, not only but also, both and, such as, either o, neither no. Both Amina and Aminu passed the exams. He's not only my friend but also my brother. You either come here or you leave. So all these are correlative conjunctions. The interjunction. Interjunction is a word that shows or expresses a feeling of surprise, pain, fear, anger, joy, agreement, admiration, warning, and all disagreements. You say, ah, oh, I'm sorry. Certainly nonsense. I can't believe it. Good God of mercy. All these are conjunctions. Now, the next topic is sentence structure. The sentence is uh, treated in English according to function and according to structure. What we mean by this is that according to structure, it means how the sentence are built from simple to complex to compound to multiple and so on. That is the structure. But functions, every sentence you see in English has a, a function it. It, it performs, be it uh, declarative, be it uh, to ask questions, to state or state an idea, or to ask questions, or interrogate, or to command. All these are functions. So, whenever you see a sentence in English, you definitely refer to two things, either according or according to structure. But before we go to sentence, let's read this phrase. What is a phrase? A phrase refers to a group of related words which does not convey a complete meaning because it has no subject and a finite verb. What you pay attention to phrase is no matter how lengthy a sentence is, if there are no meaning because it lacks finite verb or main verb or lexical verb, then it's a phrase. Take this. A NFC class, a conducive atmosphere for learning, a good idea behind the door, 
all these are phrases because they do not have subject and verb. That is main verb. Ability to adjust to a new situation is also a phrase. Ability to adjust to a new situation is also a phrase. When you, may, you want to make it to a sentence, then you say request hard work. So request here is a verb. Then you make it a sentence. Then we have types of phrases. A phrase can be divided into types such as noun phrase, adjectable phrase, verbal phrase, adverbial phrase, prepositional phrase. But when you are looking for the functions of the phrases, just go directly to the functions of the word classes fitted already. Clause, unlike a phrase which functions only as a word, a clause is a group of words containing a subject above a modifier and in certain instances an object. For example, Mary is here while he was driving, although we came late. So a clause is divided into an independent clause or main clause or principal clause which expresses a complete thought or an idea and a dependent clause often calls a subordinate clause or dependent clause which depend on the main clause to make a sentence. For example, I ate, a, I, I, I ate food is a main clause. I ate food because I was uh, uh, hungry. I, because I was hungry is dependent clause or subordinate clause, depending on I add food. So when you say some students are waiting outside, Abdul cut the door, all these are main clauses, all independent clauses, all principal clauses. But when you say, although we came late, this is a subordinate clause, dependent clause. The program has not commenced. That's the main clause. Hafsat came to see Abdul before their flight took off. Hafsat came to see Abdul is the main clause before their before the flight took off. This is the subordinate clause. When the bus broke, we were all worried. When the bus broke, we were all worried. When the bus broke is the subordinate clause because it has subordinating conjunction when and it has no complete meaning. When you start talking to a phone and start seeing when the bus broke and keep quiet, this is a friend or definitely listen and hear what's happened. We are all worried. Now, we come back to a sentence. A sentence is a group of words with subject and a finite verb which conveys a complete meaning. A sentence should start with a capital letter and ends with one of the terminal punctuation marks, a full stop, an exclamation mark, or a question mark. Notice this, we said it starts with a capital letter and ends with the terminal punctuation marks. Why do we call them terminal? Because when they, when you put them, you end a sentence. You terminate, you come to the end of the sentence you are writing. A question mark, an intro, uh, 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 an exclamation mark, or a full stop. Muhammad has traveled to Benin. I go to school. I saw him. He writes a letter. They preached all these are sentences. Then we have types of sentences. Sentence could be classified according to the structure arrangement of the clauses. I've told you already. When it's according to structure, we mean how you develop the sentence from simple to complex to compound and so on based on the structure of the sentence so when you are treating sentence you always consider it's treated according to function or according to structure if it according to structure then it is according to the way it is done based on the structure based on the words you develop in the sentence if it's according to function, that is according to function it performs. Is it making a statement or asking a question or commanding something or something like that? Then, according to structure, we have simple sentence. Simple sentence is just a sentence that explains 
one single idea it has a subject and a finite verb like an independent clause or principal clause for example he is going to school he writes a letter he eats food she cooks food all these are simple sentences next is compound sentence compound sentence is a sentence that has two main clauses connected by coordinating conjunctions such as and or oh, but yet and so on i came to school but did not learn anything but here is coordinating conjunction joining i came to school and i did not learn anything then we have complex sentence a complex sentence is a sentence that has one main clause and one subordinate clause so pay attention what's the difference between compound and complex the difference is this in compound we say it has two main clauses joined by coordinating conjunctions while in complex sentence we say it has one main or independent clause and one or more subordinate clauses for example i saw him while he was going to school i saw him is a main clause or independent clause while he was going to school is subordinating clause while is subordinating conjunction so you should always try to uh, to differentiate compounds and complex sentences as well as simple and using varieties of sentences in your writings shows a kind of expertise or uh, a good uh, grammatical knowledge of the language although it was fine we decided to stay at home ahmed was extremely happy because he passed all his papers all these are examples of uh, competences in another perspective then we have sentence according to functions they perform actions like uh, declarative interrogative and so on declarative this is a sentence which affirms or denies an idea it shows it just states an idea statement that's all president buhari has dissolved his cabinet yesterday i write a letter i attend class all these are declarative sentences they will have interrogative which ask questions who are you what is your name whose pen is this all these are declarative sentences exclamatory oh yes what a now wish or desire i wish you best of luck in your forthcoming examinations i hope to be a graduate in the next couple of months command get out move on come here close that door shut the door all these are command requests could you please shut the door may i go out to see a friend command so you see the difference between a sentence according to function and a sentence according to concluding slide of module 2 lecture we have come to the end of our discussion of items in module 2 lecture 1 where we explain word classes sentence types if you recall we have seen how part of speech are divided broadly into open and closed classes nouns adjective verbs and adverbs and pronouns prepositions conjunctions and interjunctions respectively we've also taken sentence types based on structure and functions together with their different examples we can now switch to the slides and voicing of the remaining items in module 2 coming up in lecture 2 of the same module thank you for listening